The Stone Virgins is a 2002 novel by the Zimbabwean author Yvonne Vera. Vera was born in Bulawayo in 1964, where she grew up to become a teacher of English literature. In the late 1980s, she travelled to Canada, where she married and gained a PhD. In 1989, she was diagnosed with HIV. Her first published fiction, a collection of short stories entitled Why Don't You Carve Other Animals, appeared two years later. Vera consciously sought to break taboos concerning the sorts of things a woman could talk and write about. A fiction deals with subjects such as incest, rape and wartime savagery. She returned to Zimbabwe in 1995, but the worsening political situation and her need for medical attention forced her back to Canada in 2004. She died the following year of AIDS-related meningitis at the age of just 40. She once wrote, I would love to be remembered as someone who had no fear of words and who had an intense love of our nation. Her first novel, Nahanda, was a fictionalised account of the life of Mabuwe Nahanda Chawe Naya Kasikana, a tribal oracle and a female incarnation of the lion spirit who led a major revolt against colonial rule in 1896. Stone Virgins is unique among Vera's works in dealing with Zimbabwe after it gained full independence in 1980. It's about two sisters, Thanjui and Nonsabagamedi, both before and afterwards. Thanjui falls in requited love with a man called Cephas, but the struggle for liberation is still going on, and both partners feel insecure. They part. Independence arrives, but things only go from bad to worse. Historically, this was the time when Robert Mugabe's partly North Korean trained troops began to commit large-scale atrocities. Then Dewey is raped and beheaded in front of Nonsiba. Nonsiba is raped, then mutilated by the same man. There's an implied contrast in the novel between the big cities like Bulawayo, where things are relatively normal, and small villages like Kezia, where then Dewey and Nonsiba live. As Nonsiba puts it in chapter 16, Kezia is only a place for those who were born here, who have nowhere else to go, a place for the trapped. Cephas goes further, it's a naked cemetery. Kezia's sole attraction for outsiders and the hub of its social life is the general goods store, but when the soldiers arrive they burn it down, then skin its owner alive by repeatedly dropping burning plastic onto his naked flesh. Despite the horror, which isn't as graphic as it could be, in our 2003 review in The New Yorker, Edna O'Brien commented on the trance-like ambiguity of the rape scene. The novel ends on a note of hope. Cephas comes back to the village in order to find Nonsuba. The war's still in progress. No one knows how it will end or if it will end, he tells her. But life, and perhaps even love, isn't so easily stamped out. As is so often the case with good novels, The Stone Virgins' biggest weakness is also its greatest strength. If on Vera's powers of description are considerable, but the novel begins with a leisurely 14-page description of Bulawayo, and it's nearly 30 pages before we really meet any of the characters. In a novel of less than 200 pages in total, that may strike some readers as a problem. Nevertheless, this is an important book. It takes a lot to salvage hope from radical trauma, but Vera pulls it off, partly by avoiding sentimentality. Our loss in 2005 was a serious blow to Zimbabwean literature. Apart from anything else, her take on President Mugabe's ultimate demise and its aftermath would certainly have been worth reading.